quickly want to talk about this, considering we want to talk about club stuff. So it's now been confirmed from a few people. Again, it's not yeah, it's not confirmed, confirmed, but by people that went, it's kind of confirmed that Berghain has now raised their prices to 30 euros as an entry. I think before it may have been 25, if I'm not mistaken. And before that, it may have been 22 euros. So now it's 25 euros entry. And I think the five pound re-entry, sorry, the five euro re-entry still stands, right? Which is annoying. Don't get me wrong. It also illustrates how spoiled Berliners are in general. Like, they are spoiled because I'm thinking of myself, right? How often London clubs charge £30 and up for tickets. And it's all the time. If you buy them in advance, most clubs charge you around, you know, anywhere between 20 and 30 But for the most part, I'd say £30 is probably the, you know, the average you're going to pay for most places, especially when you include the first drink that you get or like the cloakroom, right? You're instantly going to be £30 anyway. In Berlin, they've had things so good over the years and a big club like Berkhan has still tried to like keep their prices somewhat fair that now that they've taken it up from 25 euros to 30, people are freaking out, literally freaking out. And I can't understand why, because I think the first times I used to go to Berkhan, the first few times, I remember it was around 22. And I remember when I first went, I didn't know what the price was. So I just went in and handed the guy some money. And I remember getting change back. I think it was like a 50. I was like, oh shit, I got change, right? And then when I got the change back, I was like, oh, that's funny, isn't it? Like a club this big has got the ability to kind of charge this price. It's fucking amazing. But then when I usually go, whatever money I give to the person at the ticket hall and I get change, I just leave that as a tip. And I've got obviously other bits of coins with me to give to people for the cloakroom. But it was always the idea whenever I went there, whatever the price was, if it was 22, I gave them 30, they could keep the tip. That was always what I did. So I kind of always saw it as like that price that they were charging at that time was super good. And it was actually something that I was more than happy to pay for. And actually, I'll give them a tip on top. So the 30 euro price now is no real different to what I was already giving them with the, with the tip included. Now, obviously, there's going to be another tip on top. But I still think in terms of bang for buck, considering the club is open Friday all night, Saturday all the way to fucking Monday morning, and they have consistently booked the biggest, the biggest, 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 biggest DJs in the world and some great upcoming people for 30 euros. It's a pretty good deal. And people don't tell you this, but the drink prices in Ber in Berghain are also pretty decent. You can get cocktails in there, sometimes for under 10 euros. They have a cool little ice cream bar. You can buy sandwiches. There's a nice little... Um, Spatkoff little guy that sells like beers just outside the club if you don't want to pay for drinks in there because allow re-entry again this is something that does happen in, in London London clubs unless you go to Fold and they've got an 18 hour thing or you go to other clubs there's no such thing as re-entry once you're in you're in that's it but Bergen allows you the opportunity to actually go out ha have a drink go have some food sleep have a wank Whatever you want to do, you can go do it and come back again. So I think that ability to do that for 30 euros or, you know, 35 if you include the re-entry fee is more than decent. It really is. But I think for whatever reason, Berliners have this idea that that price was going to stay the same. But it makes a lot of sense because I remember going out there maybe third or fourth time ever. And then I got around like some people that actually live there, quote unquote, right? Or maybe that are from there and stuff. And it's interesting to, to be around actual Berliners who club because they're kind of tight. They don't like spending money on booze. They don't like spending money on drugs. They don't like spending money to go into clubs. They really operate on a tight budget. They want to have the most amount of fun spending the least amount of money, which to me is odd because when I go out, I kind of go out knowing I'm going to spend the money. So I'll save some money before I go out. But I also know that Berlin compared to London is incredibly cheap. So I'm happy to buy all my drinks in the club because I'm not having to pay a tenner for a beer. In London, honestly, most... I went to fucking... What's it called? Um, 60 Doc Road the other day, Adonis. And I swear to God, they had pints. They were, they were serving you like Stellas and shit in a tin. The same things that you buy in Sainsbury's for like, you know, 10 pounds and shit. Mixers, the same sort of price. So you can't really like go too crazy now you're going to spend like 500 pound on drinks it's not even worth it so for the most part when i'm going there to burger and you're spending five euros on a beer or you're spending three euros on a cocktail i'm okay to not pre-drink i'm okay to not pre-game i'm just gonna go in there and drink 
But Ber- Berliners don't do that. They would rather spend, you know, one euro buying a drink from the local, you know, from the local shops and shit, the little spat- spetties or spatkoffs, however you fucking pronounce them, which is a really interesting approach to raving. They've got the they've got the best infrastructure there, right, in Berlin, because they have a local government there that actually supports clubs. They've got local initiatives and stuff um, that basically gives the clubs abilities to basically improve their sound installation. And they have these, you know, um, things that they sit down with local neighbors and stuff to make sure that they're on the same page. Like, there's a really good approach to how they kind of respect and look at clubs. They kind of look at it as an integral part of their infrastructure, an integral part of their money making ability and shit. Like, they respect club culture over there. So, for the most part, people take clubbing very seriously. And it starts at the door. They have door pickers that take their job seriously. Like they're going, you know, I, I spoke about it already in the podcast, but some clubs even hire very popular TikTok techno girls to stand at the door at the clubs and stuff and whatever it may be to bring a crowd down, to be well known because they're very stern and they get it, whatever. It's a whole culture around door picking. That's not even security. It's actually a thing that they do, a door picker. They have a very particular way that they book the flipping DJs, the sound you know, they have, you know, particular sound engineers that kind of spec up the flipping speakers inside the club. They have lighting people. They take it very seriously. It's a very serious thing. So you would imagine these people that take it seriously would also be open to having some fun, spending some money, chilling out, having a good time. Nah, for them, spending 30 euros in a club is too much, especially for a club like Berghauser, which is insane. But what this might do, what this might do it might open up Berlin, Berlin to other places. It might open up Berlin for more people. No, it might open up the club space overall. Because I do think, especially for people like myself who are foreigners, there are there is a too much emphasis put on Berghain. Because Berlin, I think, is still one of the best clubbing cities in the world because of the amount of clubs you can go to. But I think some of them get overlooked because Berghain gets all the attention. So maybe... A good thing about this whole price hike might be that some people might think, you know what, it's too much money for me. So I'd rather go and check out other places now. So maybe places like RSO, places like Oxy, um, places like Aden, Watergate, all these other clubs that are amazing in Berlin might start getting a lot more attention and a lot more foot traffic because punters want a lot more bang for their buck. That might be a bit of a thing going forward. And then that also might have a a good effect on the Berghain dance floor. Because then it might mean there'll be less, you know, um, tourists coming in and it might kind of level out where it's like a, a bit more half and half. Because I even me, I'm a tourist when I go there, but there definitely is a difference when you go to Berghain on an off night and it's like 50-50, locals and fucking tourists. It's a nicer vibe. When it's all tourists or when it's all locals, like, you know, like a majority, the vibe is a bit off. But when it's, there is some sort of parity, some sort of leveling, it's a bit better. So maybe with that price hike, people will start exploring other places and it will kind of level out the playing field and make the vibe a little bit better out there in Bergheim because people are complaining now about their drinks getting spiked and stuff and they're passing out, which to me is fucking wild. I still think people, for the most part, everyone's crying, complaining online. I think a lot of you guys and girls need to grow up and, you know, take responsibility for yourself. Because I think a lot of people, for some reason, they read all these articles and they see all these videos about fucking Berg, Berg and they go there and they legitimately treat it like that space is going to take care of you. Yes, it's a good space. Yes, they do a good job at door picking. Yes, it's very strict to get in. So by default, people are going to be well behaved and they're going to act right. It's going to create a better atmosphere in there and all that blah, blah, blah. But it's still a fucking nightclub. It's still a nightclub at night with sketchy people. You have to look after yourself. You can't just be, you know, leaving your drink on the side, going wandering, talking there, going there, doing a bump over there, coming back over there, and then expecting everything to be cool. You have to take responsibility for yourself and look after yourself. You can't put that responsibility on a club and then get annoyed when the bouncers don't react to you fainting or falling over and don't want to help you or get annoyed that you're fainting and falling over all over the place because you're essentially ruining the mood and you are you know not looking after yourself which is then going to put the club in a position because if you get injured in there it's going to fall back on them so there is a lot of like lack of personal responsibility going on there there's a lot of like Berghain take me look after me Berghain sort of attitude going on which is a little bit pathetic from people that are way too old to act like that in my personal opinion so maybe with the price hike 
a lot of the babies, a lot of the people complaining, a lot of the nitpickers, a lot of the chin strokers will fuck off and then it'll be leveled out to all the cool people who know how to act, who know how to behave, who know not to get too cr drunk in the queue, who know not to get too high, who can take the experience as it is, who can go in there and just drink fucking orange juice and have a good time and it's not always fucking Project X every day. Like those two people you need in there because they actually add to the atmosphere. You could, especially when you, go to, when you go to Panorama Bar, the the room upstairs, which is all the house stuff. Usually, there's a good mix of people in there who are stone cold sober, just dancing and having a good time, and it adds to the ambiance. Not everybody has to be fucking twitching and super high for it to be good. Sometimes it can be chill, but when everybody's all like, "This is Project X. This is gonna be the best night of my life, and tonight's gonna be a good time." That's when everyone gets shit because you're all too hype. You're too you're too turned up. And there's no way this club's going to match your level of turn up unless you fucking force it. And people do force it. And then some guy comes along with a fucking ponytail and does that on your drink. And then you wake up and you're in fucking Dusseldorf. You have to relax. You have to relax. Everybody has to relax. But hey, what do I know? Um, and then I was thinking about it, right? And these motherfuckers don't know what it's like to rave in London. Because look at this. I found this screenshot. Look at this screenshot I found. Of a night that I went out in fold. I went out to fucking fold, right? One time. And look at what I paid to go to fold. 49.50, bro. Man found a screenshot, right? From my fucking Twitter where I paid 49.50 to go to fold. Not Bergheim, not fucking the school, not even DC 10, right? None of these illustrious places around the world in some of the most expensive cities in the world. No, just regular old fold in Canning Town, 750 capacity or 500 capacity, whatever it may be called, to see who. Arm and Tricks play all night long. And I played £45 plus four fifty fucking booking fee. And it was only on until what? Nine, maybe like 11 to 6 a.m. one night all the way to the morning, Not, none of it going on for two days and shit, none of that stuff, and I paid 49.50, .50, plus my Uber, right, plus my snacks, imagine, so all you guys out there complaining about 50 euro, 30 euro price hike at Berkheim, when you're going to be there from like Saturday night to Monday morning, please shut the fuck up. Because you don't know how good you have it. You get rejected from Bergheim. Oh no, they rejected me. I can't get in. They don't think I'm cool enough. Boo hoo. There's a million clubs within a five mile radius you can go to that are 10 times better than Fold. A million. Maybe thousands. Maybe hundreds. But still, within a five mile radius of that fucking club, you could go to any club in there that's better than fucking Fold. I don't think, this is what I was going to say before we end it. I don't think we have a single club in London that's as interesting, again, maybe not music-wise, but that's as interesting of a space as like Sisyphos. And Sisyphos in Berlin, for the most part, people that, are, that like techno and whatnot and house, it's like a little bit, you know, people look at it like it's a, bit, it's a little bit lame because the people that go there, the music policy is a little bit, you know, tech house and deep house and minimal and people don't really like that sort of shit. It's not the most trendy type of music. But Sissy Foss is still one of the most amazing clubs to go into because it's like a labyrinth. There's all these little rooms everywhere, all these little nooks and crannies and shit, right? There's all these little spaces you can go into. This room you can't go into unless somebody walks out. This one's full of mirrors. This one's that. There's all these little cool rooms and shit. It's really cool. It's kind of like this little hippie commune circus type of thing. There's not one club in London that's as good as that place. And that is the worst place they've got. Or even Matrix Bar. I don't even think Fabric is better than Matrix Bar. I'm going to say that as a club, looking wise, I don't think Fabric looks better than Matrix. And Matrix is like the bottom of the bottom. So all these motherfuckers crying and complaining in Berlin, you don't know how good you guys have it. You don't know how good you have it, man. Really don't know. I swear on my life you don't know. Because if only you knew, you would not be crying like this. I swear to God you wouldn't be crying like this. You'd just be like, you know what? I understand. I see and you'd go from there. But hey, you know, what do I know? What do I know? 